Hey guys, it's Lori. So are you seeking a relationship or are you in a relationship and you're not sure if it's the right one or maybe you're married and you're feeling unfulfilled or something. Um, this, this could cover any one of those. Um, it may sound a lot like I'm talking mostly about you know, if you're seeking a relationship, but keep in mind the things that I'm saying, if you're in a relationship, do these match? Now, if you're married or if you're in a committed relationship and it doesn't feel like you meet this criteria and you're like, oh gosh, you know, I'm not advocating for divorce. Um, never would I do that. Um, and this is kind of, it's, it's seeking a spiritual partner. It's seeking a partner that is lasting, that's compatible. Of course, it fits in with worldly thinking too, but maybe, maybe not as much. But if you're on your spiritual path and you've grown spiritually, you know that um, worldly way of thinking and the spiritual way of thinking are two totally different things, and you really can't have both. You can have worldly things and not be worldly, but you really can't be worldly and spiritual at the same time. I know a lot of people try to, but that always falls apart. And actually, that's going to be part of the next video I do, uh, which is going to be kind of an important video for those of you that know me. But anyway, I thought I've been, this has been on my heart for um, weeks, actually, to do this um, video and things just kind of keep getting in the way. So, okay, so first and foremost, I want to talk about a few spiritual myths um, that I hear quite often. Uh, and keep in mind, I talk to clients all day, every day, just about every day, maybe not every day, but almost every day. And a good portion of those people, whether they're married, single, seeking, not seeking, in a relationship, whatever, are focused on relationships. So many people, um, that is like their main goal. So that's why I decided to do this. Um, so let's start with some of the myths, spiritual myths. Uh, number one, God will choose my mate without me doing anything. And that's true and not true. Okay, so if, we're, if our spiritual ears and eyes are open and we're following guidance, you know, God will set it up so that that person, a good person for you, is, you know, the situations come. But it's not like you can just sit on your couch and God's going to be like, here you go, knock, 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 here I am, you know. you got to put some kind of effort into it, okay? Um, myth number two, there's only one one. I hear that so often. Well, what if he's not the right one? What if she's not the right one? Think about all the people that are in the world. You know, not just your little community, not just your state or town or city or town or not even just the country, but how many countries are there? How many people are there in each country? How could there possibly be just one one? And imagine... If that were true and you mess up then what happens you're alone for the rest of your life no I happen to believe that you can pretty much make it work with almost anyone not not somebody that's um, a, um, a toxic person or a, narciss or a narcissistic personality disorder or um, many other traits that I've talked about in videos before. Some of those people you just can't engage with. Never mind being in a relationship with unless you want them to really, really cause some damage. Um, but for the most part, people can work it out together, you know. Um, they, I mean, look at back in the old days um, when people would, or arranged marriages, or uh, even sometimes that still happens today, or, you know, like when people got married at like 14 years old and they stayed married till death do us part. Not only stayed married, but happily married. You know, are you going to tell me that these people knew? You know, I don't know. So there's not only one one, but there are things that we should look for, okay? Um, another myth uh, is if it's the right person, there will be no issues. Everything will go smooth. 
I have not found that to be true in my experience and in my study and um, even according to scripture um, and, you know, talking with clients in my practice. No, I, that's not necessarily true. We all have it. We're all human. There is nobody perfect. I mean, there are certain things, but just because there are some issues that you have to work out or maybe not all doors open up, um, you know, all these opportunities and everything's always, you know, rainbows and unicorns, it doesn't mean you're not in a good place in a relationship. Um, another one is... Neither you nor this relationship, regardless of how good you are, is going to change a person, okay? So if you're beginning a relationship and you're like, wow, he's great or she's great, they've got this, 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 and this, but he or she doesn't want children or he or she wants to live here or he or she is kind of untrustworthy, there's nothing you're going to do that's going to change that person. So take them as they are or don't take them at all. Okay? I'm not saying people can't grow. I'm not saying a good relationship is not going to make each of you a better person. It is if it's the right relationship. But don't go into it thinking you're going to change somebody. After all, you don't really want that person if you think that you need to change them. Correct? Okay? Um, and I think we're up to number five. Um... Another myth, and this goes for more than just relationships. A lot of people think it about jobs or, or friendships or children or whatever, houses, cars, money. This relationship should not be expected to make you happy. Another person cannot make you happy. Another person cannot fulfill you. That might sound... Um, it might sound wrong to you, but I'm not saying that you won't be happy in a good relationship, that you won't feel fulfilled in a good relationship, but if you're seeking another person to fulfill you, or if you're seeking another person to make you happy, that's too big of a job for anybody or any relationship, okay? So if that's why you want a relationship, I hear so many people say, well, I'm just so lonely, if only. You look at you, look at what you want, look at who you are, look at what you need, work on that, grow spiritually. God can give you fulfillment. Another person can't. A perfect really or not a perfect you know, perfect for you relationship can absolutely do some good things and bring joy and peace and but it's not it's you can't put that on another person. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you can't you can't put that kind of responsibility on another person. Another person can't make you happy, can't fulfill you, and can't make you unhappy either. They can cause problems. They can bring joy. Do you see what I'm saying? Don't place that responsibility on another person. I guess it comes out wrong when I say, I mean, can a person make you happy? Yeah. But I guess don't depend on another person to make you happy is what I'm saying. Okay, all right, so I want to get through this quickly, and I've already gone to over eight minutes. So when choosing a spouse, okay, well, first of all, when dating. A couple other things I just want to bring in real quick. If you are not in the market for a relationship, if you are just kind of out there, just want to have fun, just want to meet friends, please put that out there initially. Please put that out there initially. Most people that are out, whether they're young or whether they're my age or somewhere in between or even older, the majority of people are seeking a relationship, a monogamous relationship. I mean, of course, there's other sub, you know, cultures that are looking for other stuff, but usually they announce that. But if you're not sure if you want a relationship, if you think you just want to find like a friend or whatever, put that out there first, okay? Because it's not fair to do that to somebody. If you're in the dating world and you really click with someone and then all of a sudden you're like, yeah, no, I really don't want a relationship. And that person is like, well, then why are we doing this? You know? Another thing is, is please, 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 please. I talk to so many people that do this. 
young people, old people, whatever, it doesn't matter. Friends with benefits doesn't work. Okay? And they're, okay, people will argue with me and go, yes, it does, yes, it does. But just like I just said a few minutes ago, if you're only in it for just hanging out, having fun, physical satisfaction, whatever, put that out there initially. But I will tell you, in my, you know, old lady wisdom, in my, pre you know, with my clients and everything, everything I've learned, it doesn't work. Because even if both people go in, which is usually the case, both people go in with the mindset, friends with benefits, blah, 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 one of those, one or both, is going to start catching feelings, and whether they want to or not. And then there's that whole, well, I can't say anything because we have this agreement. And then you start getting, growing a resentment. And then maybe that other person finds somebody else. And you're like, why am I not good enough? It's just, it's not a good practice. Not to mention the spiritual uh, repercussions of that. And I'll get into that later, but it may be if I have time in this video. If not, we'll talk about it later. Um, another thing is, ladies, men, just do yourself a favor, okay? And, and if you're dating and you find out that this person that you think is great is married or otherwise spoken for, think twice about that, okay? Um... Even if they say, because they probably will, that they're miserable, that they don't want to be in that relationship. Uh, and chances are they, I mean, they don't. They're unhappy, obviously, or they wouldn't be looking elsewhere. But do yourself a favor and walk away from that. Because if that person truly wants to be with you and is truly unhappy in that relationship, that person needs to speak up and tell that person, their their spouse or their significant other, that they're unhappy. And they need to walk away without you, okay? Because some things could happen. They could grow resentment and say, oh, you ruined my relationship. Not true, but they could do that. Um, or possibly you're just like the side chick or the side guy or whatever. I remember one time I met this guy, and I met him in very unusual circumstances. Um, so I thought, I was under the impression that, well, this must be a God thing, right? I met him. I mean, it, it just, I'm not going to go into the whole story, but it just fit together perfect. And he was what I, at the time, saw as my perfect match. He was really, I was actually like, whoa, thank you, God. I mean, it was like, thank you, God. He was good looking. He was um, personable and funny and, and, and energetic and, and outgoing. And he was a small business owner. And he had, I mean, he was um, uh, beyond, beyond, um, he had a good financial foundation. No doubt he's going places, very successful. Uh, people liked him. Like I said, I mean, just just almost everything that I would want in somebody. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. And he wanted me. And I was like, maybe he's blind too. I, had a, I was joking with a girlfriend the other day. You know, we were talking about some things. And um, I joke about my criteria for men um, because I'm really not in the mar uh, market. So I, I have my criteria high. It's just, it's just a joke. Um, but we added to it uh, the other day. I'm like, well, I think he ought to be blind now, too. Because at one time, it wasn't a big deal. Ladies, listen up if you're young. At one time, it wasn't a big deal. Getting hit on was something that happened every day. Now, I'm a hag. <laughs> That's what I said. So, you know, it's like things have changed. Okay. Anyway, that was a side note. Um, uh, but I, uh, so we date. We go out. We're having a great time. Everything's good. I mean, he picked me up. I can't even remember what kind of car it was, but it was like this fancy schmancy car. And not that I'm into that kind of stuff, but, and I was a lot younger then too, but, so my priorities were a little different, but he brought me to a nice place. He was a gentleman, pulled out the chair, opened the door. I mean, just everything I could ask for. And really, really, really easy on the eyes. He was great. I can't even remember his name now, honestly. Um... We were on the same page. We thought the same way. Uh, it was just really good. Um, 
And then he brings up, like, towards the end of the date, um, he brings up that he's not married, but he has a girlfriend that he lives with. And I was like, oh, well, thanks for telling me that now. I mean, I'm glad he told me on the first date, but I wish he would have told me prior to going out with him. So anyway, he's like, well, it could still work for us. And, you know, I don't want to just walk out on her. What if it doesn't work for us? And I was listening to him, and I understood what he was saying intellectually. I still thought it was a bunch of BS. I mean, so basically, I'll keep you on the line. Make sure it's going to work with us. Before I end it with her, yeah, okay. And I'm not happy with her, obviously, because I'm with you and blah, blah, blah. And, okay. You're beautiful, blah, blah, blah. It could still work. Why are you so opposed to this? Because I told him right away, no. And I remember he was dropping me off at my car. And he said something along the lines of, if you weren't so... It wasn't an insult. I can't remember. It was along the lines of pristine or, oh, if your morals weren't so high, you know, we could really work out. And I turned around and I looked at him and I said, you know what? You're misunderstanding me, okay? First of all, it's nothing wrong with having high morals. But it's, this isn't even about my morals. I don't look at people that have made that mistake as saying, like, um, you have low morals, you know? Anyway, I've got other stories where I could tell you where I've screwed up, and I do want to talk about that when you think you're hearing from God and you're obviously not. Um, but I said to him, this isn't about my morals. This isn't even about her. This is about me, okay? I'm not going to play second to anybody, and I'm not going to just hang around knowing that you're going home to somebody every night in the hopes that maybe you'll pick me. Sorry, I'm not going to do that. And um, he was like, hmm. So then anyway, we left, and then months went by. It might have even been a whole year, and I happened to run into him again. Not like in a dating situation. It was in a, a business situation. And... Um, He's like, hey, how are you? I'm like, hey, how are you? Still with, I couldn't remember her name, but I asked him. And he's like, yeah. And, you know, we did our our transaction. And I was about to leave. I'm like, okay, good to see you. And he said, hey, Lori, come, here, come back here. I just want to tell you something. And I was like, okay. He said, listen, I had never looked at it the way that you presented it until you said that to me. So I want to say thank you to you because not only was I being bad to her, I was being bad to you or any other woman that I am trying to connect with. And in turn, I was being unfair to me. So he said, thanks for teaching me something. And I'm like, you know, same old story. Yeah, you're welcome. Happens all the time. I'm the one that they go, hey, thanks for showing me this. I went and married her, you know, anyway. I got off track again. This is going to be a long video. Okay, so guys, just, that's just rule that out. Okay, so now when you are looking, rule those things out. Ask. Ask right away. Don't, don't be embarrassed of what your belief system is, okay? Because I'll tell you, number one that's going to keep you guys together is having common belief system. Common spiritual belief systems. What do you believe about God? What do you believe about the universe? Are you, are you questioning it? Where are you? Now, I'm not saying you have to be at exactly the same level, but your belief system better match each other. Even if, you know, one is here and one is here, be on the same page belief-wise. That should be number one, and you should be asking that right away. Don't let the relationship keep going and then say, oh, well, you know, I can show him or he can show me. No. Make sure you're on the same page first. Um, number two, do you have a compatible purpose? What is your purpose in life? Which means you should probably know, at least have an inkling of that before you go out dating. See, all of this is going to relate back to kind of know who you are, what you want, what your goals are, what your purpose is, what your beliefs are before you enter the dating world, okay? Because if you don't even know yourself, how are you going to end up with the right person, right? So, number two is have a compatible purpose. Um, 
you know, if, if I, I, I can't even think of an example right now, but I can think of an example of incompatible. Um, I remember, you know, when I was married, um, we, at that time, I thought I was a Christian. I was not, uh, but I thought I was. I was a Christian intellectually, not by the heart. I had no idea, honestly, but I thought I did, a as well as he did. So we were kind of on the same page, belief-wise, okay. I had no clue who I was or what I wanted. I knew my gifts. I had gone through a terrible struggle. If you've ever, if you know me or if you've ever heard my story, um, yeah, I was a mess. Um, I'm glad that we were married. We not only had a, a be beautiful children together, but... Um, I learned a lot. I think we probably could have stayed married. I was not, I was not um, the best wife. He was certainly not the best husband. But, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? But when I started to help people, when I really, you know, grew into my purpose and said, okay, this is what I really need to do. I don't need to be working at the bank. I need to be helping people. I need to be growing. Um... My husband couldn't understand that. He couldn't. He couldn't understand why I put so much value on others, why I put so much value on God, why, as I was growing spiritually and as I was discovering what I should do, he was very successful in what he did, and he was very talented, extremely talented, and very creative, and we weren't growing at the same levels, but you know, we didn't have all that. There was a whole lot that went into that. But as far as purpose, I felt smothered. Like I could not fulfill my purpose if I stayed with him. So it was like a choice, not only to stay married, but do I just like shut myself off to maintain this or do I grow and walk away from this? Or is it possible to stay in this and grow? It all kind of blew up on me, but a purpose, compatible, it doesn't have to be the same purpose, but compatible purpose. And then, are you both emotionally healthy? Now, how many of us are emotionally healthy, right? First of all, let me tell you this. Nobody's perfect. We're all sinners. Everybody's going to have some kind of problem, okay? So, you're, don't, you're not perfect and neither is he or neither is she get that out of the way. And I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about having a perfect person. I'm talking about having somebody who is aware, who is aware, has worked on their mental health. Um, bringing baggage into a relationship is not fair. Okay. So especially when you get to be my age, everybody's got some kind of baggage, but are you carrying it around or have you kind of unpacked and you know what still needs to be thrown out, even if you haven't thrown it out yet, do you know what needs to be thrown out? Um, you know what I'm saying? Are you working on it? Are you aware? Arrogant people aren't aware. They think they are, but they're not. Just remember that, too. Because um, you know what? A relationship really doesn't cause the problem. It reveals problems. The best way to discover what you want, what you don't want, what the problems are in life is to be in a relationship, whether it be a friendship or a, a love relationship, because that's how we learn who we are. So the relationship isn't causing the problem. The relationship is revealing the problems, okay? Um, and if you have like a resentment, if you're carrying baggage and you are in unforgiveness and you've developed a bitterness or a resentment, People begin to resemble what they resent, okay? That's something to remember, too. Okay, so how do you know if you're emotionally healthy? Well, there, here are some symptoms of people that are not emotionally healthy, and this is not an exhaustive list. This is just a few things to look for. Within yourself first, and look. And you know what? There's nothing wrong in stating up front what you're looking for, okay? People always say, well, I don't want to talk about, you know, long-term first date. Why not? You don't have to say, hey, marry me and scare the person off, but you can say, this is what I'm interested in. I'm not interested in just hanging out with you and 
catching feelings just for you to say you don't want a relationship. Okay, so if that's where you're, let's find out if we're on the same page. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with finding out, in, you know, upon, you know, first couple times meeting where your belief system lies, where what you want in life, you know. People tend to shy away from that because they feel like they're, but you know, they feel like they're being like foolish or, or uh, intrusive. But you know what, especially when you get to my age, um, you don't have time to waste if you want to be in a relationship and for younger people too you might have more time or maybe you don't but younger people are more in the in the market to marry and have children and that kind of thing you want to be on the same page while we're talking about this I am a advocate for premarital counseling even if you you know think you know each other so well if, especially if you do, what do you have to lose? Give it six months, premarital counseling. You may find out some things about each other that you didn't really know because a lot of times in counseling, things come up that you wouldn't really talk about, you know, on an everyday basis. People pre-marriage have found out through counseling, thank God, that one person isn't interested in having children and the other is. Or maybe one person wants five kids and the other person is like, no, I'm good with two and that's it. Or what if one person wants to travel and the other person is like, no, I have, I'm, I'm staying right here in this small town and I'm never leaving, you know? Things like that. Okay, so emotional health, um, things to watch for. Number one, uncontrolled anger. If a person cannot control their anger, um, if watch. Do they get really upset with the waitress, with the waiter? Do they show signs with other people when they're telling you stories about their life? Do they have uncontrolled anger? Are you seeing it? If you're dating for a while, you'll know. Um, and you know what? Another thing, watch how he or she talks about family. How does a man treat his mother? Yeah, I know that's old. People have been saying that for years, but it's so true. Um, how does a female treat, not only dad, but like how does she treat her family? How does a man treat his family? How do they treat their exes? How do they talk about their exes? Even if they have no contact with their exes, how do they talk about them? How do they talk about business deals? You know, you, you can learn to listen, learn to listen to people. They will tell you who they are. Um, so uncontrolled anger. Number two, an active addiction. Now in this day and age, I think everybody has some kind of addiction or has had some kind of addiction um, or something that they struggle with. So you can't, you know, rule out addiction, but active addiction. Um, and if they're not in active addiction, why not? Like, where are they in their recovery? Are they still, you decide, you decide. It. You know, some people go from addiction to uh, they just transfer it to, like, meetings or whatever. Um, there's all kinds of addiction, not just drugs and alcohol. There's um, there's porn, there's gambling, there's shopping, there's food, there's all kinds. So just kind of pay attention. Um, bitterness or unforgiveness, I talked about that already. Bitterness or unforgiveness unforgiveness is always going to lead to resentments if a person is carrying resentments not only do they start to resemble what they resent so that will be a nightmare but they will also find a way to resent you a person that is bitter and cannot let go that's it becomes a state of being um so you don't want somebody or you don't want to be that somebody if you're looking for a relationship um number four somebody who's selfish or self-centered. You can see this, you know, people fake it a lot, especially narcissists. They come off as like giving and loving. Is the, is the topic of conversation always about them? If you're talking about something and they go, oh yeah, that reminds me of me, or, or well, I don't do that. If it always comes back to them, they're probably a selfish person. Also pay attention to how they treat others in their life. You know, right down to, like I said, the waitress, the person at the gas, sta at the gas station, or whatever, anybody you run into. Um, a manipulator. A manipulator. <sighs> Learn to spot manipulation. Some people are really, really good at it. The people that are really, really good at it will manipulate you, and you'll go home and go, was I just manipulated? <laughs> you know, 
learn to be a good communicator, you will spot manipulation um, and, you know, keep your discernment up. And number six is greed. A greedy person, you will never be successful with a greedy person. A spoiled person. Um, an entitled person. Because they're going to want what they want now, whether you can afford it or not. Not only that, not only greed that way, but how unfulfilling. Like if a person is greedy, not only with material things, they'll be greedy with their emotions. They'll be greedy with uh, time. Um, they'll put themselves first. It kind of goes together with the selfishness. So what are you looking for? The two biggest things... Other than, you know, the, the uh, compatible belief system, a compatible purpose, good emotional health. But to see that somebody is emotionally healthy, spiritually growing. And a lot of people that are quote-unquote spiritual pay attention to what they believe. Because a lot of things are wrapped up. They're a deception wrapped up and to, made to look like the truth. So really talk about it. Don't be afraid to talk about it. It's so important. You want to grow together. The best relationships include God. It's him, her, and God. So when something goes wrong, both parties are going to God and to each other. They're not going out to find somebody else. They're not going to lie to, to make things... One of the things I did when I was married, and it's bad, is I always, I never wanted him to stress out. I never wanted him to get upset. I hated confrontation. Even if it was something we should both be upset about, like, hey, there's not enough money to pay the bills or whatever. I would lie and cover and do whatever I could. I mean, I'm busting my ass trying to make it look like we got all kinds of money. He's out there spending, spending, spending because he would do that. And I would be like, no, no, that's fine. And what is, I was a liar because, and yeah, okay, my intentions were good, but I still lied. Okay? So that's one thing you want to look for is honesty and integrity and truth. Because when you love somebody, if you can't trust them, it's going to affect the love, right? Um, and another thing is, are they generous and are they kind? I, an emotionally healthy person doesn't have to be mean to other people. I'm not going to say they'll never get upset, they'll never get jealous, they'll never get angry. I mean, these we're human, right? But somebody who is, is working towards their spiritual growth and, you know, truly gr growing and, and trying to be the best they, that they can be, if they do happen to get, like, you know, a jealousy vibe or, or whatever, they're going to share it or, or they're going to work on it themselves, you know. Kindness. Um, they're not going to go off on people. I mean, like I said, we're all sinners. Nobody's going to be perfect. But as a person, if they're generous and kind and they have integrity and they're honest, their emotional health is, is that those are signs of good emotional health. The other things are bad emotional health. Neither lists are exhaustive. So, if you're seeking a relationship, look for this. If you're in a relationship and you find that any of these areas are a problem, work on you. Remember, you can't change another person. You can't love another person enough to make them change. What you can do is work on you. You Know what you want. Know what your boundaries are. Know what you want. Know what you will accept and what you cannot accept. Because we all have to accept things. We all have to bend. We all have to compromise in relationship. Know what am I willing to bend on? Where? You know, sometimes that takes time. You learn, oh, okay, I'm willing to bend here. But know ahead of time or know now if you're in a relationship. Where are my boundaries? What is unacceptable to me? And what are the consequences if you cross that boundary? Don't be afraid. I'm not saying you have to get divorced. But don't be afraid to set these boundaries and to stick to the consequences. Get, get some help if you need it. I recommend if you're going to do couples therapy, make sure you're okay first. Do some individual therapy or counseling or coaching. I'm a coach. I also do couples coaching. Um... 
that's all okay. But that's really important. And and look at these things. So if you feel like there's something, you know, that's that's not good there, it doesn't mean it's absolutely a hopeless cause. Um, and I'm talking about the people that are already married or already in long-term commitments. Um, doesn't have to be hopeless. Doesn't mean you have to break up. You could fall in love all over again. But you need to work on you. You need to know what's unacceptable. You need to be able to bend. Not be arrogant and say, nope, absolutely not. Nope. You need to be able to bend. Except for whatever crosses that boundary. And you know what? Don't make your boundaries foolish. Like, well, I'm not going to deal with if he doesn't come home at 5 o'clock every day. Or if he does this one thing unacceptable. Remember that you're not perfect either. I'm not saying to be walked on. I'm just saying it's a fine line. Learn how to communicate. Work on yourself. Because what happens is we can work on ourselves. We can change ourselves. The people that are around us have two choices when we change. They can either grow with us and change with us. Because that's what happens. Even if they don't intend to, if you change, another per the person closest to you will change. Or they will find it unacceptable and they will leave. You can't control how another person behaves. You can control what you will accept and pray about it. Okay? So if you have any questions, if you need any coaching, I know this turned out to be a really long video and I didn't intend it to be. Um, but yeah, I just did a, a relationship workshop and I just wanted to share. That's how I got the notes. I, as you can see, I keep looking down. I'm looking at my notes from my relationship workshop that I created. So if you're interested in that, if you're interested in couples uh, coaching or individual coaching, empowerment coaching, um, spiritual growth, any of those things I can help you with, um, you know, hook me up. Write me an email. Um, uh, my email address for information is or for appointments or whatever <coughs> passages p-a-s-s-a-g-e-s -S -S -E group g-r-o-u-p info i-n-f-o at gmail.com so passages group info at gmail.com <coughs> pardon me um it's like the middle of the night so pardon my appearance <laughs> um and i hope you guys are doing well i know i haven't been on here in a while um and I hope this helps you a little bit. Um, if, and like I said, I mean, it's not exhaustive. There are other things. If you have questions, you want to talk about it, please, please either comment, um, subscribe if you haven't, share this. If you want to do a workshop or if you want to do coaching or if you just need to talk to somebody, let's set up an appointment. All right, you guys, I hope you have a great day and I will talk to you in the next video.